So these are two books that deal with the uh, somewhat morbid subject of Last Suppers, which, morbid as it may be, I find particularly fascinating, and apparently other people do, because there's at least two books on the subject here. Um, this one is called Last Suppers, A Collection of Final Meals Through the Years, by Caroline West and Mark Ladder. And this one is Their Last Suppers, Legends of History and Their Final Meals by Andrew Caldwell, the History Chef. And this one's a little bit more deluxe. Um, it's got a picture of Napoleon on the front and like he's eating a hot dog or something. And this one was a dollar at Dollar Tree. And this one was $4.99. And I can't remember where I bought it. Um, but it's it's nicer. It's got a dust jacket. Um, has the last menu on the Titanic, on the back. Um, it shows for for the first class. I don't think the the steerage class got to eat water pudding and and mussels or anything like that. But um, so I thought I would uh, go through these books and talk a little bit about the weird fascination we as people have for things like this. Um, Last suppers, the last choice people make, or the last thing they coincidentally eat, uh, because food is one of the three drives in life, and um, so naturally, it's normal for many people to find subjects dealing with food and people to be in interesting. So, um, I guess we'll start with this dollar book. Um, Dollar Tree has a book section, and you can find some really random things in it. But this is a, a handsome little book. Uh, dark, ghostly in papers. A lot of clip art in this book, if I remember. A lot of clip art. Probably free clip art. Um, Caroline dedicated it for my mom, because I always said I would, and Mark... From my dad, who always believed in me. And this is... Um, Dug and Bone Books. Printed in New York. Or London. And it's broken out in sections by death row inmates who choose their last meals. And I think Texas might have done away with that. Um... World leaders and political figures who may or may not have cho chosen them. Film stars and other celebrities. Rock stars and musicians. Writers and literary figures. Royalty and other historical figures. Disasters and famous events like the Titanic and so forth. So, and there's a little introduction that tries to, like what I'm doing here, tries to understand where this comes from and uh, why we are fascinated by morbid Topics like this. Cauliflower is nothing but cabbage with a college education. That's funny. Death row inmates. Um, the last meal is, is supposed to be a gesture of humanity. to it, it, Somewhat to make the state feel a little bit better about what they're doing. That's the purpose of it is that we are extending some humanity to them uh, to allow them to choose their last meal. But I think Texas did away with it because one of their last uh, death row comics picked this big, enormous meal and they put it all together and then he didn't eat any of it. So then they just, everybody got, everybody lost out then. Um, Thomas Grasso, death row prisoner. I did not get my SpaghettiOs. I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. So he was outraged that his last meal... Another, uh, there's a movie called um, Monster's Ball, which uh, The Last Supper figures into it prom prominently. And the very uh, multi-layered character that Billy Bob Thornton plays as a prison guard is delivering the last meal to the convict played by um, P. Diddy. And uh, he's very upset when Heath Ledger, his son, screws up the last meal, even though Billy Bob Thornton's character comes off as just a a despicable person he still thinks that that, that courtesy is, is very important uh, it talks a little bit about death row um, some facts about it 
been then the uh choices of meal and order of popularity cheeseburger being number one steak number two fried chicken number three some sort of eggs number four fried chicken steak number five uh, a Mexican style eggs number six, a plain burger number seven, and liver and onions oddly enough number eight. And then we get down to some of the famous people and what their last supper was. Timothy McVeigh, um, two pints of mint chocolate ice cream. Um, Ted Bundy, he, um, he was offered but refused to eat the traditional medium rare steak, eggs over easy, hash browns, toast with butter and jelly, milk, coffee, and juice. And then, uh, Eileen Wornos, uh, a cup of coffee is all she wanted. That movie Monster, uh, played, Charlize Theron played him, played her. Carla Faye Tucker, one in Texas, she had banana, a peach, a garden salad with ranch dressing. The two killers from In Cold Blood. Uh, Smith and Hickok had the same last meal. Shrimp, french fries, garlic bread, ice cream, strawberries, and whipped cream. And now, uh, world leaders and political figures. These are people. This wouldn't be a, an order, but what they actually had. Um, top tipples of famous world leaders. I guess that means they're famous drinks they like. That's some British slang there. Um, Herman Goring. He had a cyanide capsule. That's almost like a joke. Uh... Zachary Taylor. Lots of cherries and glasses of iced milk and water. While attending the July 4th celebrations at the Washington Monument on a very hot day, Taylor was taken seriously ill with severe abdominal pains and nausea. He died five days later. Cause of death, possibly cholera or gastroenteritis as a result of something he'd eaten. And he had milk and cherries. Abraham Lincoln. Um... Mock turtle soup, roast Virginia fowl with chestnut stuffing and baked yams, cauliflower, and cheese sauce. And, of course, that was the last thing he ate before he attended uh, the theater with his wife to watch Our American Cousin. Franklin D. Roosevelt. Breakfast in bed, fried eggs, bacon, and a slice of toast. I believe he was in Warm Springs, Georgia when he passed. John F. Kennedy, he the breakfast he had in Fort Worth. At the breakfast speech, he had soft-boiled eggs, bacon, toast with marmalade, orange juice, and coffee. Richard Nixon, he had a stroke. The last thing he had was pineapple slices, cottage cheese, and milk. Martin Luther King he had southern fried chicken with Louisiana hot sauce, black eyed peas, collard greens, and cornbread. Mahatma Gandhi. Goat's milk, cooked vegetables, oranges, and a concoction of ginger, sour lemons, and strained butter with aloe vera juice. Socrates. Uh, the last thing he had was a hemlock lace drink, which he was, uh, that was an execution. He coined the expression, worthless people live only to eat and drink. People of worth eat and drink only to live. That's been sort of bastardized as uh, eat, uh, eat to live, not live to eat. Francois Mitterrand, uh, the president of France until 1995. He had oysters and foie gras, plus a French delicacy called ortolan. A tiny songbird that is force-fed and then drowned in 
Armagnac before being roasted and ideally eaten while under the cover of a large napkin. That just sounds disgusting. I don't know anything about that. Um, film stars and other celebrities. Um, Oliver Reed died from a heart attack while drinking the, in the pub in Valletta, Malta while filming Gladiator. His drink at the pub was low and brow. Low and brow? The... That's a kind of a cheap beer. Um, River Phoenix. Young and promising American actor who died from heart failure, possibly drug-induced, on Halloween morning outside the Viper Room. Uh, he... Oh, that, this isn't really what they ate. These are favorite meals of movie stars. Catherine Hepburn, chocolate brownies, Judy Garland, steak and kidney pie, Frank Sinatra, barbecued lamb, Patrick Swayze, chicken pie, Elizabeth Taylor, chicken with avocado and mushrooms. James Dean. The last thing he had was apple pie and a glass of milk. John Belushi. Lentil soup was the last thing he ate. Marlena Dietrich. She had a, f a few spoonfuls of soup. Olive Thomas. A lethal dose of mercury biochloride. James Gandolfini. Fried prawns, foie gras, various alcoholic drinks. His, uh, they're making a, a, a prequel to The Sopranos now, and his son, Michael, is going to be playing Tony Soprano. John Candy. Pasta meal to celebrate a good day, is a fil good day of filming. Brittany Murphy. Some noodles, Thai food, a Gatorade, water, and tea with lemon. There's still a lot of curiosity about what killed Brittany Murphy and her husband. No one's... A lot of debate about that. Marilyn Monroe. Um, Mexican buffet selection is champagne. Jimmy Stewart. Peanut butter and jelly. And for dinner he had corn, game hen, and carrots. Sounds pretty hearty. Um, Mitsugoro Bando the 8th. A Japanese actor. He had... Fugu, fugu fishes. I think that's the poison puffer fish. Giovanni Versace. He had two eggs over easy. Bacon. Some whole wheat toast and black coffee. Lou Costello from the partnership Abbott and Costello. He had strawberry ice cream soda. A different Socrates. A uh, world famous Brazilian footballer. He had beef stroganoff. Rock stars and musicians. Uh, Janis Joplin. Uh, let's see. No, oh, Wolfgang Mozart. He had pork chops that were undercooked. John Lennon, a corned beef sandwich. Frank Sinatra, a grilled cheese sandwich. Elvis Presley. doesn't say Michael Jackson had tuna organic salad and a glass of carrot and orange juice Jimi Hendrix had tuna fish sandwich Cass Elliot had a ham sandwich um, Liberace had cream of wheat with brown sugar Kurt Cobain, a can of root beer and some camo lights. Allen Ginsberg, fish chowder. Ernest Hemingway, New York strip with baked potato and a Caesar salad and a glass of Bordeaux. F. Scott Fitzgerald, a candy bar from Greenblatt's Deli.
Keener the Eighth, three lamb chops, two chicken legs, a kilo of beef, a bottle of wine, and three glasses of brandy. And that was an average day. That's not what he ate. Um... Charles II had a small amount of pottage. Rasputin. He had honeyed cakes and Madeira wine, both poisoned with cyanide. George Armstrong Custer. Roasted buffalo steaks, beans with molasses, Roasted wild corn and prairie hen. That's a hearty last meal. Bonnie and Clyde. Um, they had breakfast at an American cafe. Now the Bonnie and Clyde Ambush Museum. I've been there. Yeah, it used to be a cafe. And you, in the front, you can still sell where the counter would have been. And the back, where the kitchen would have been. And the stock room and all that stuff. Tutankhamun. Pickled roast beef, two kinds of bread, and some red wine. And here's menus from the disasters. Uh, menus like what Civil War or World War One soldiers ate, what was on the Titanic, the first class, second class, third class. Here, here's what the third class passengers ate on the Titanic: rice soup, fresh bread, cabin biscuits, roast beef with brown gravy, sweet corn and boiled potatoes, plum pudding, and sweet sauce and fruit. That's actually not bad. The Hindenburg had a really grandiose menu. For breakfast, they had bread and butter with honey and preserves, eggs, Frankfurt sausage, ham and salami, cheese and fruit with coffee, tea, or milk. Dinner, beef broth with marrow dumplings, rind salmon a la Graf Zeppelin, roast gasoline, pears, uh, supper was pate la Lorraine. Roast fillet of beef with mixed salad, cheese, and fresh fruit. <laughs> the treacle wave, what we call the molasses wave. I guess treacle in England is what we call molasses. This is a very British book. So, um, the other book, let's see, it's a little bit bigger. And it just has a few people. Uh, the Captain of the Titanic, M.O.K., Napoleon Bonaparte, Alexander the Great. How in the world were we to know Alexander the Great ate? Diana, um, John F. Kennedy, Montezuma, Rasputin again, Cleopatra again, Admiral Nelson, Abe Lincoln, Leonides, uh, Captain Lehman of the Hindenburg, Elvis, Lord Frederick Chelmsford, Caesar, Custer, Hitler, Marilyn Monroe, and Captain Cook, and John Candy. And a little forward. And this is actually a cookbook. So, he this is a recipe book. So, it has a story about them. Um, and then it has... The last menu, like in this case of Captain Smith, the last menu is on the Titanic. And his particular last meal. And how to make it. And that's interesting. It takes it a step farther. Martin Luther King. Same thing. Uh, 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 his whole speech about him. And then uh, the meal he had. The Southern Fried Chicken with Louisiana hot sauce and vinegar. Black eyed peas, collard greens, and cornbread. And then his favorite recipe, which is catfish creole. And he, so it shows you how to make either one. And there's the recipe. Napoleon. Um.
Wait, which one was his last meal though? I don't know if this is just his favorite things. So this was his breakfast. Liver and bacon chops, sauteed kidneys and sherry, shirred eggs with cream, garlic toast. That's a heck of a breakfast. Chestnut soup, chicken marengo, calves liver, uh, veal kidneys, shirred eggs, and garlic toast. Alexander the Great. Um, I'm not sure how in the world we're to really, with any degree of certainty, know what he ate. Fired seafood with mango and pepper relish, honey glazed lamb. This has just got to be speculative. There's no way of knowing how these things were cooked. Swordfish and sweet and sour sauce and crushed mulberries, Sardinian lobster, figs with honey and wine. I mean, the wine they drank back then is nothing at all like the wine you can purchase now. So, I mean, you're already starting. Everything about this would be almost completely different. Now, Dinah, we certainly know what she had. Um, she, uh, they had their last dinner at the Imperial Suite Ritz Hotel. She had asparagus and mushroom omelet appetizer, Dover sole with vegetables tempura, and Dodi had grilled turbot and Tattinger champagne. And her favorite food was watercress soup. And then it has the recipes for everything. Diane's homemade watercress soup. 12 ounces of fresh watercress with large stems removed. 2 ounces of butter, 2 ounces of flour, 2 pints of chicken stock, and a pound of single cream. That's just incredibly easy to make. JFK. And the other book said he had soft boiled eggs, and that says the same thing here. Bacon toast, marmalade, orange juice, and coffee. Very simple breakfast. His favorite dinner was hyenas clam chowder, roast quail veronique with mimosa salad, stone crab a la Kennedy, and Maltese salad. Stone crabs a la Kennedy. This, the large claws of the crabs caught on the eastern seaboard of the United States and Florida are delicious when in season. Boil them lightly with a dash of seafood spices and a pint of ale. Serve cold with Maltese sauce. Hmm. Montezuma, the last Aztec emperor. Not sure how we know what he had either. That was quite a long time ago. Even in the days before his death on June 30th, 1520, Montezuma was still being treated as a deity. Although his Spanish captors were being subjected to ever-increasing hostility by the Aztecs, the daily ritual of court life for Montezuma went on. He drank chocolate from golden goblets and enjoyed his favorite seafoods brought every day by runners from the Gulf of Mexico. So, ceviche of red snapper, lime and chili salsa, roasted turkey breast with sage and apricots, tomato, avocado, and jicama salad, and guacamole, so, and hot spicy chocolate. I really assume that someone was recording all of this and writing down the recipe. I don't know. I'm just thinking there's a lot of speculation going on in this. Rasputin, he had honey cakes, Madeira wine, Zakuski, and Russian black bread. The range of Zakuski is infinite from simple smoked sprats to beluga caviar, savory stuffed eggs, or tender kidneys and Madeira sauce. They're an integral part of any Russian gathering. His favorite food was codfish soup, pickled cabbage, borscht, sturgeon, and champagne sauce, and Zakuski. I've only had borscht one time, and I thought it was pretty good. Um, I've had... I've had... I don't know if I've had... Pickled cabbage is all over the place. It's either sauerkraut or it's kimchi or it, it, it's all kinds of different varieties of it. But I'm not sure if I've had that kind. Zakuski is zesty eggplant slices. Hmm. Russian pickled whitefish. Oat brand Russian black bread. Cleopatra, another one that we really have no way of knowing. Grilled eel with basil. Whole baked fish and salt crust. Tiger nut sweets, sweet wine cakes, and hummus. What in the world is tiger nut sweets? Chop seven ounces of fresh dates, fine, and blend with a little water. Add a little cinnamon and chopped walnuts. Shape into balls, coat in honey, and ground almonds and serve. How in the world did we know? Who recorded this? Admiral Nelson. Celery and Stilton soup. Dry devils, roast pheasant. 
uh, asparagus and crisp rolls, new potatoes and spice holidays sauce. Abe Lincoln. Okay, now when I bought this book, this was the passage I had read and I remember reading. I know what he ate last, but his favorite thing was chicken fricassee and I, and I used this recipe to cook it to make dill chicken fricassee and it was really good. So I did try this and it was delicious. Um, and I, I, that might have been the only time I ever had chicken fricassee, but it was really good. Um, Leonides, King of Sparta. There is no way to know what he ate. Um, fire Roasted Rabbit. Whole fish on the fire. Grilled kid chops. Grilled fish with pepper and fennel salad and fruit with yogurt and honey. This is part of a complete dinner. <laughs> Alright. They missed their opportunity to say that. Uh, the last menu on the Hindenburg and how to make it. Fish and black butter. Chateau potatoes. Baked duck. Duck of Bavarian. Elvis Presley. Let's see. Um, favorite foods. Fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. We all know that. Ham pancakes. Hawaiian hamburgers. Baked apple and sweet potato pudding. Ham bone dumplings. The golden rule at Graceland, Elvis's home, was that breakfast, his favorite meal, was to be served all day except mornings. Even the menu for his wedding to Priscilla on May 1st, 1967 at the Land Hotel in Las Vegas reflected Elvis's consuming love of affair with food. The wedding menu was ham and eggs, southern fried chicken, oysters Rockefeller, roast suckling pig, poached and candied salmon, lobster, eggs minute, wedding cake, and champagne. Good old spaghetti and meatballs, fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. And it's basically you make a grilled cheese sandwich, but you put peanut butter and bananas in it instead of cheese. Ham pancakes. Pancake mixed with cornmeal and some ham. Lord Frederick Chelmsford. Comfort's Brunch, Eggs in the Bush, Grilled Antelope Steaks, Liver and Bacon, Baby Sweet Pineapple and Salted Ham, Julius Caesar, he had Skillas, Big Shrimps, In Metulus, Sea Mussels, A Liter Badenum, Sivi Agnimnum, Exkodatam, steam lamb. Fabrizio Veridis et Bayane, green and bayan beans. Pulum frontone, frontonianium, frontier chicken, and desert ambrosia. George Custer. I had just butchered all that Latin. Uh, roasted buffalo steaks, beans and molasses, roasted wild corn, and prairie hen. Texas-style game hens, roasted wild corn, venison mook, or elk steaks and chops. You can buy buffalo steaks um, at Kroger. They have, uh, and I've, I've enjoyed a few buffalo steaks in different trips uh, to Colorado. and um, And it kind of covers... James Hook is someone different. Um, King Kamehameha had a banquet for 10000 Wow. John Candy. He had Mexican spaghetti. Um... Interesting topic, interesting books, and I hope you enjoyed the video. So until next time, please rate, comment, subscribe, click the bell icon. 
if you want more of my videos, um, let me know if you like what you're watching, and I'll keep making them. Bye.